we all have dreams, big and small, that create a life in our minds different than our reality. All the while, we watch others seemingly make it happen. I'm Rachel Denson, a farm girl turned mortgage guru, moonlighting as your self-help cheerleader. Together, we'll pull back the curtain with intentional conversations and discover how you get there. (laughs) Welcome back for another week of how you get there. Have you ever said, I'm just going to quit my job and move to an island? I'm sure you have. I know I have. But here I am, still landlocked. I'm only an island mermaid in my dreams. But my girl, Callie Lindsay, she actually did the thing. And she is here to tell us all about how you get there if you really do want to quit your job and move to an island. (laughs) Callie is one of my best friends. We have actually been friends now for a decade, as Callie said it best earlier. Yes. Um, Crazy to think. Yeah. (laughs) Yes. It's so wild. And not even to to say that and not be a childhood friend either. Like we met each other when I I thought I was grown up. Now I don't feel like I was very grown up, but I was getting there. (laughs) Yeah. I feel like sometimes adult friendships are the the best ones. So we found each other at a perfect time in life. We did. way so it's perfect and we what a what a wonderful decade we've had to celebrate all of the all the good things that have came into our lives over the past 10 years of knowing each other absolutely for sure. so good well I was thinking I was making these notes and a phrase that came to mind for this episode and really just a, a an underlying theme of a lot of things about how you get there is like the saying how the sausage is made Have you heard of that saying? I think so. Yeah. (laughs) Okay. This makes me feel better because I think I was behind because like I have heard that saying about like, oh, you know, nobody wants to know how the sausage is made or something. Specifically, it's a line in the, one of the Hamilton songs, you know, the play Hamilton. Oh, interesting. Yeah. It wasn't until I looked it up. It was like a couple of years ago. I was on vacation to Disney and my brother-in-law had to explain to me like, what what that means um i like was using it as a colloquial term every once in a while but i really didn't understand like the reason why nobody wants to know how the sausage is made is because like sausage is made out of the bits of crap that like aren't other pieces of meat like yeah (laughs) right and so it's like you love sausage but you nobody wants to actually see how the sausage is made it's like oh like i didn't totally get why that was a saying until I was like, I looked it up. I was 26. I was like, you know, those things about, I was this year's old when I understood well, stuff. You got me Googling it at 32. Cause I don't know. I was <laughs> like, that makes me feel so much better no, that I'm not never, alone. Like, sat down and thought about it, but thank you for explaining. And I learned something. You're welcome. <laughs> you are welcome, Callie. Well, this is what I feel like we're in a, this is how the sausage is made kind of moment because like the, the phrase there is whimsical. It's fun. And I mean, it was such an amazing journey, but what I'm really curious about, and you're going to tell us the whimsical stuff, but I also want to actually like understand the nuts and bolts of what, how did you get to this moment and pull back the curtain on some of the true like logistics, because I think that's what stops so many people up. I mean, here I am the same thing with this podcast, you know, for two years, the actual technicalities of like, how do I put it out there kept me from doing it. And I think the same goes for moving, let alone doing like a cross country or uh, it's not cross continental because St. Thomas is just (laughs) South, but you know, over, over the ocean kind of move. So Callie, I'm going to give you the floor. If you want to just like tell us your story yeah. um, with, the, with the move in your own words. And then I have a few questions I know I want to ask, but I may stop you along the way to like further explain maybe some of the fun, the not so fun mechanics, but something that I think as a listener may help somebody else think I can do this too. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you, of course, for having me. When you approached me about the podcast, I was like, you know what? Like, I actually love telling this story. And like, we haven't really sit down like in detail, you know, because we were like blossoming in our friendship when I kind of moved there. And it was more like you just saw the fun pictures, but we never like talked about like the deep, dove deep on like, you're right. And how I got there. And I've never heard it. Yes. And 
it's that's it's so great. So, you know, just kind of the background on me, like, of course, I'm from Murray, you know, born and raised, born at Murray Hospital, like never <laughs> left, you know, all of that and went to Murray State, you know, got my degree in ag and um, was staying in Murray. I was like, I want to join a sorority. Like, you know, that's important to me to at least meet some different people that I wouldn't yeah. just meet or like stay in my same little clique because obviously that's easy to do, especially in Murray. Yes. But anyways, and so ultimately, you know, that's how you and I got to know each other is for, through sorority. So just a backstory there. And we have so much in common there too, because we were just old enough that we were, or we're far enough apart. We were never in school together, yes. but we had so much in common. Like you're an ag girl. I'm an ag girl. We were both in GAM, both born and raised Murray. So when we met, it was just, it just clicked. It was like a good fit. Yes. Yeah. For sure. So yeah. So I graduated college in 2014. And I, at that point I was working, I think through like beginning of 2016, I'd been um, working for an ad company. I worked in Hawkinsville. So I did move to Hawkinsville at one point, but uh -huh. like, what is that? Like an hour away <laughs> from Murray, like barely counts. Um, and so they ended up transferring me to the Mayfield location. And I was like driving back and forth. And I ultimately like decided to get around my apartment in Hoptown and move back in with my mom and just do the drive back and right. forth to Mayfield. So it was like in such a holding pattern at that point in my life that I was like, you know, I could buy a house. I could set like this money that I have or like want to save up and do like I could. But if the moment in my mind that I bought a house, I was committed to living there forever. Yeah. It was just honestly that scared the hell out of me. It makes it so much harder. It does. And then you're, yeah, you're, you know, you're committed financially, physically, mentally, like all the things. So uh, there was just like one specific day and it was in February, 2016. I was just driving back to Murray from Mayfield uh -huh. and it was just gray out. It was freaking cold. I was like, this is just not where I want to be in life. Like, I don't want to be, you know, doing what I'm doing daily, you know, career wise at that point. Yeah. And then also just living there. So I just remember that day specifically and I was like, I've got to get out of here. <laughs> and so I started just thinking in my mind, like, well, anyone can move to Florida. Anyone could drive to Florida tonight, like especially where we live and be there. Mm -hmm. But I was like, why could I, why would I just do that? Like, why shouldn't I move somewhere that like nobody has like ever moved that I know or like, you know, whatever. I like took myself back to this one cruise that my mom and I went on when I graduated college and we met this couple and they were like relatively my age at that point. Okay. And they were like, we're like maybe a little bit older, but nevertheless, they had been on a cruise to Puerto Rico at one point and they were like, we loved it so much. We just moved here. And I was like, what? And so it just kind of like inspired me and they probably have no idea that that like stayed with me to this day, but it did. Isn't it crazy how a sentence from a stranger can impact you so big? I know. And I guess I just never really thought that people did that. You know what I mean? I was like, who does that? Like just up and moves to Puerto Rico. Like granted they were married, so they had a little bit more structure there. But anyways, I was like, okay, I know I want to move to the Caribbean. Like then I started just kind of planning mentally, like, well, where do I want to live? Like Puerto Rico is probably out because I don't speak any Spanish. Right. So <laughs> that's not really, like a good spot for me. And so then I knew that there was the, you know, the U.S. Virgin Islands on that same cruise. We had went to St. Thomas, St. John, and honestly, ended up spending most of our day on St. John instead of St. Thomas, uh -huh. which is where I ended up leaving. But so by the time you parked your car at your mom's house, had you already decided, screw Florida, I'm going to the, yes. <laughs> I'm, oh, yeah. I'm going all the way to the Caribbean. Like the most pivotal 30 minute drive I've ever had, like, and I will ever have probably in my life because it just like. It literally created this whole like, life did. for me. It did. And and it needed, I mean, it was, you know, all of it worked out. So yes, when I got to my mom's house, of course, I was like, you know, pleading the fifth. I wasn't going to say right. anything until I had this like, really set up. And so I started just kind of like over the course of the next few months, like I ultimately decided I need to move in October of that year and okay. just spend the next like, six months or whatever kind of, you know, putting the pieces together, saving up money, right. deciding all the different things and also had some weddings that I was in and I was like I just need to wait like right. I don't want to be coming back and forth a bunch so I was like October if I can make it October you were kind of I remember this because it was like you were kind of closing a chapter in your life like it was very oh, yeah. did you ever have moments where you're like what am I doing not during that time I just couldn't wait to get there so what did you do first 
Like in the six months, what was the first thing you tackled? I just started really focusing on saving money. And since I didn't have rent at that point, you know, I, it was better right. because I could save on that and just put it back in my back pocket. And then, yeah, I just started like kind of liquidating some things, just going through things I knew that I didn't need anymore or mm -hmm. couldn't see myself wanting after I moved sure. back. Like that wouldn't, that wouldn't fit in a beach home. Like don't need that. You know, <laughs> like, Whatever. <laughs> But yeah, in between up until October, I was just kind of doing all those things and started planting the seeds with my family, like with Madeline and my mom. And, but I didn't, I didn't tell like any of my friends really. I did tell Natalie. Yeah. Because we were, we are so close and we're at that point too. We were actually at Breakers and I like kind of whispered it to her and she's like, get out of here. Like, you know, was it? Yeah. Wasn't having it. But anyway, I just kept it really quiet because I just didn't want the negative input or like someone trying to talk me out of it or all the reasons I shouldn't do that it because so I had all the reasons in my own head, yeah. you know, like I don't need that. I just need to focus on like what I want out of this. Right. And you can't like make people respect your boundary. So sometimes right. the best thing, like I know, and I need to take a chapter out of your book on this, <laughs> but like I'm the world's worst about keeping things in my mind. Yeah. Like I, like, you know, and obviously here, I, you know, I say this like almost every episode, no wonder, cause I have a podcast, but it is true. Cause I guess like, you know, this is why I do this. It's so, it's a great thing to know. Like sometimes you just have got to keep things with yourself until you're ready to like handle the pushback because yeah, you weren't ready to hear it. And it was the, the wisdom to know, I don't even need to be like, I don't even need to have to have these conversations with people to say, I don't need your input. Like I know what I'm doing because people are going to give it to you. Right. You can't make people not sometimes. I was only 25. And you know, at that point, I'm sure a lot of people were like, she's young and dumb, you know, like, and I didn't want to hear that. I was like, if I am, I want to, I want that to be on me and not because I listened to somebody else. You know what I mean? Sure. Yeah. So yeah, so that kind of all transpired. And I decided like it was my mom's fall break. I'm gonna, you know, go down at that point. She's a teacher. So it was just easier for her mm -hmm. to go with me and at least like, push me off the plane if it needed it yes. or whatever at that point. Did you have a place to live when you moved down there? No, no, I didn't have a car. Okay, I didn't have a place so you to live. literally liquidated everything. Yes. Bought yeah. a one way ticket. Yeah. I will say this though, that I didn't, I had a Jeep at the time in Kentucky and I didn't sell it at first. Cause I was like, I, that's one thing I was like, I loved that Jeep. And I was like, I'm going to hang on to it just to make sure I'm going to stay. Mm -hmm. But it's kind of funny because it, I really thought I could get down there and get a bicycle and just ride a bike everywhere. <laughs> and I was literally within like 10 minutes, I was like, why did I ever think I could just get a bicycle and like live off a bike? Like, I don't know. So yeah, I, within that first week, I was like, I'm going to have to sell the Jeep because I need a car here and like, whatever. But yeah, so then like within the first two weeks, I did have a car, I had a job, I had a place to live. So, but that first week, like after my mom left leading up to me getting all of that situated, I was like, there was a point that I was like, I don't know that I should do this. Like maybe I should throw in the towel because I'm stressed. Like I'm afraid like that I've done something, you know, that I'm going to regret here. And this is why you're already on the island. Yes. This is already there. I'm there. It's, it's finally when the regrets start kicking in. Yes. And I was like, I mean, that first two weeks, I mean, you start like, especially when my mom left, I was like, man, this is real. Like I don't have a ticket back. And like, are you staying in a hotel at this point? Or by the time your mom no, left, did you have a place to stay? Right when she got there, we had an Airbnb just for like that first two weeks okay. up until I can move to my apartment. But I found that apartment pretty quick and it was most of the apartments there are furnished. So I didn't have to worry about any of that. Did you look that up before you went? Like, is that something you were prepared no. for? Okay. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, I just like literally thought oh, I'll figure it out when I get there, you know? What did you say about what book did you buy? It was like the Virgin Islands for dummies, kind of like it was like, it will just kind of yeah. went into like, there's, you know, the three St. Croix, St. John, St. Thomas, and it just kind of went into like, hey, like, this is what each one of them are kind of known for. If you're Luke, like wanting to move for this vibe, go here. And I originally thought I would go to St. Croix because they're like really known for their agriculture. Okay. And I thought I could just tie that in to what I knew and like studied in school and that sort of thing. But then St. Thomas just had a lot more going on, a lot more job opportunities, a lot, you know, mm -hmm. just busier. And I thought that fit more from coming from small town Murray. Like I was moving out to not stay in the same comfort zone of like quiet, right. calm, 
whatever. Like I want to do something different. I want to like meet people and not be stuck in the same little yeah. vibe that I've always been stuck in. So, so yeah. So at that point, my job, I bartended for like two months and it was terrible because I was used to the breakers and breakers, which, you know, like fun, like yes. beers, pina coladas. And here it was just like way more in depth that I was like, I can't stay up till 2 a.m. anymore. Did they give you any training? <laughs> Barely. I mean, it was pretty just like fast days. And I was like, this is not going to work for me. Like, and the, again, the 2 a.m. thing, I was like, man, I'm over that. So seasonally at Breakers was fine, but not like <laughs> right. every day. We, especially it's, it's when you're 2 a.m. in the patron is different when you're 2 a.m. in the bartender. <laughs> Yeah, and your feet are tired and you're like, get me out of yes. here. So, so yeah, but then quickly after I got settled in more and did a nanny job for like almost a year. And that was really fun because we, we did travel a lot and they were, you know, they like to go and do things. And so, yeah, I got to go do a lot with them and see different states and different, you know. Different How did you end up finding them? Actually, through a friend that I had made, she moved down there specifically for a family to nanny them, which is really okay. common there. Yeah, they'll like find them online somewhere and they'll specifically, you know, put out a call order or whatever for a nanny and they respond and they move them down and they live with them, like all the things. Can you imagine getting a nanny off the internet? Like that's also no. the most un like small town thing ever. I know. I know. Well, I will say a lot of just like the custom or like culture there is that Yes, they're like family oriented, but they are like very trusting. Mm -hmm. And I think you kind of have to be if you're like isolated on a small island, you kind of like have to be right. to be able to like survive, do anything else, you know. But yeah, so I nannied for them for a long time or like a year. And then um, it was September 2017. Amanda Whitaker was visiting me over Labor Day weekend. And we started getting these like notices that a hurricane was coming. Uh -huh. And we both were like, oh, whatever, you know, like no big deal. And we were actually on a boat trip in the British Virgin Islands. And our boat captain was like, yeah, you know, you might want to leave if you can. Like, it's going to get really bad. And so we started kind of freaking out. And luckily, Amanda already had a flight back on Tuesday. And we were supposed to leave on Wednesday. Mm -hmm. And so I ended up getting a flight out too. But long story short, you know, we got hit back to back with two Category 5 hurricanes, which... They had had a hurricane oh like gosh. that maybe ever. And since then, I mean, nothing, you know, luckily nothing since then. But uh, my apartment was like completely destroyed. I was living on a condo like on the golf course at that point. And my balcony doors busted out and there was like a foot of water in there at one point. So like all my stuff was ruined. And oh, my goodness. But yeah, so I came back to Murray during that time and I went back full time in January of 2018. But in the meantime, I was doing a lot of like disaster relief efforts to help. Oh, yeah. That's how you got into that. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, I was helping with, like, you know, different, like, flights out, like, helping book that for people because they had no internet, you know, connections or anything. or we just, like, basically talking through, like, very minimal communication. And then just helping fill up different semis with, like, supplies and generators and, like, all the things. And how did you get into doing this? Did you, like, just sign up to be a volunteer or... No, I was actually right before the hurricane, I had taken another position with a company, with a company. <laughs> That's a whole other story, but with this girl. Yes. Oh, yeah. And she kind of started a nonprofit. Yes, you know the story. <laughs> I didn't have to start this stuff together. I know. She started this nonprofit company. Ultimately, they were like putting all of this together, and I was helping her on the nonprofit side along with mm -hmm. her bookkeeping company but you know that again a story for another time but anyways so that's how I was helping and actually whenever I was back News Channel 6 did like an interview with me I didn't know that the one out of the yeah I'll have to send you the link to that it was on my mom's porch they were just asking me about like you know what happened uh -huh. and like all the things about living down there and so how long were you there at that point how many how it had been in a year and a half or more than that yeah, so I moved there in October of 2016, and then the hurricane was 2000, uh, September 2017. So I hadn't even been there a full year yet gotcha. when that happened. But yeah, and then I moved back full-time, like I said, in January of 2018. So I was just gone for a few months. And Did you ever consider not going back? There was like a small fraction of me that did. And in fact, the, day, the night that I was like before I was leaving to come back, 
we got a tsunami warning on our phones for down there. And I was like, my mom was like, this is your sign. Like, you need to stay put. You're not going back. And I was like, I'm going back. If this new this tsunami doesn't happen, I'm going back. Like, <laughs> But it was just, you know, a weird sign. I was like, is that something that I'm supposed to like pay attention to here? Maybe I don't need to go back. But, um, but yeah, there was a small part of me, especially... I think Madeline was pregnant again at that point or just was about to have Ember. And so I was having the, you know, a second niece at that point. And I was like, maybe it would just be better to stay. But I was like, no, I've got to see this through. Like, I'm not done yet. So Mm -hmm. so yeah, I went back and stayed for another little over a year. But in that time I was working for, I transitioned to work for a disaster relief company that was there responding. And then fast forward to where I am now, it's kind of led into me. Now I'm like kind of permanently in like a FEMA position career where I do disaster relief work, but as, at a subcontractor level. So that's awesome. So I want to go back to friends. So, cause we talked about, so just to kind of con- confirm I'm on the right page. So you saved up all this money for six months, liquidated what you knew you didn't need, n- yeah. decided you were moving to St. Thomas, but then I guess did yes. enough research that you figured out that you really couldn't do anything until you were there beyond that? Yeah, exactly. So, right. like, got your mom on board. How did that go? <laughs> I actually called her before I talked to you because I, like, couldn't remember exactly, like, the conversations uh-huh. that we had leading did up she to remember? That. Just kind of, like, asked her. Yeah, and she was like, she said, she said, well, I think, you know, at that point, I was just like, wow, that's a bold move. But like, I don't know. And she said she was just mainly worried about me being alone down Mm -hmm. there because just like safety reasons and stuff. And Madeline, she, you know, my sister was like, basically, she just never thought like when I told her, she's like, yeah, LOL, like, whatever, you're not going to move. And then she didn't believe me until I booked the flight pretty much. So the whole time she was probably in denial, but. So another question for that kind of season too, I think that, and I don't think that this is like a solution to the problem, but like, I admire that. I feel like you also kind of were in this season where there were like people around you were settling down. And like, part of that was uh, like romantically, like with a partner. And it was like, that wasn't what working out for you. Was that part of where you were like why am I staying here to like hope something like miraculously comes up versus just being brave enough to like just take the season of singleness and finally like chase your dreams like was that part of your thought or did you even like kind of think through any of that no for sure yeah I mean I had dated some guys you know that it didn't work out and for one reason or the other but ultimately it was more you know, I, I I do want to do this for me and I don't want to do it because I, you know, this didn't work out or that didn't work out. But, but yes, I think at the end of the day, it was something I knew that I would never do this if I was married or if I had settled down or if I'd done all the things. And so it, it took more like, yes, I want to do this while I don't have kids, while I don't own a home, while I'm still single. Yes. It was all of that factored in, but yes, it wasn't like I got dumped and I'm moving to an island, but (laughs) No, and I didn't think it was that, but I just think it was like. I wouldn't suggest that to anybody. I don't no, think that. Yeah, that solution. would be good. And then, you and the right reasons. And yes, a hundred percent. Yes. And that's, yeah, I knew that that wasn't your reasons, but I do, I did feel like that kind of empowered you to be like, what else? Sure. like there's yeah. literally nothing keeping me here like you weren't you didn't have right. a rent yeah. you like you didn't have a rent like you said you'd saved up all this money i remember you telling me that at one point you were like i've i'll have all the savings like i would should either buy a house or move and it was like you i yeah. think had to you took the hard look which is do I really want to live here? And sometimes that's really hard when it's like, I think that you can not hate a place, but also not want to live there. Like, I don't, you know, I don't think that they come in, that they're necessarily two things that have to be together. No, the, what I always just say about it is that I just outgrew living in Murray. And that was like, it makes me sad in a way too, because I knew that like all my family was right. there, but like, I just didn't see myself living there anymore. I outgrew it. I wanted to do something different, something that I had always wanted to do. I love the beach. Like, yes, maybe moving to St. Thomas was drastic, but it was amazing. The best experience I've ever had lived, like all the things. So, yeah, I mean. And it was such a good starting point. 
oh my gosh, like it's led me into this whole career that I never, you know, would have dreamed of. And I, I do still love ag and, you yeah. know, it's always in my back pocket, but ultimately I feel really passionate about this because I've, I've lived yeah. through it and, you know, I understand I can, you know, have compassion for the people that are living in the moment Absolutely. of the disasters and different things. And we were talking, I said friends, and then I got to your mom and your sister, but I wanted to ask, so we talked about like, you know, you, so you get there, you book the flight, book the Airbnb, you're there. Did you do anything in particular to try to meet friends? I mean, you're one of those people. And I think we get along in this way too. Like you don't meet a stranger, like, you know, you're willing to just say, you know, Hey, like, what are you guys doing here? Or, you know, I just know like, that's why you're such a fun person to adventure with because well, you don't like, well, you. like you don't, I don't feel like you travel in a way that you're like, okay, no new friends. Like you're like the people with Puerto Rico, like you're all like open to the experiences. So will you just tell a little bit about like, did you wake up and think, okay, today I'm going to meet friends or like, I need to put myself out there. Yeah. Like, tell me a little bit about how was it like building a community there? Just in my experience, I would just go to the beach and like, there was usually like a group of people there and I would just put my towel close enough to where I could like maybe interact or maybe yeah. have like some kind of conversation uh -huh. with somebody, you know, like, and then of course, like if you go to the bar, like you bump into somebody and you start talking or whatever. Right. Um, and of course down there, I mean, it was like a spring break all the time. Like, and you, you know, you can get into that or you can't, but you know, you just got to find a balance if you want to make it there. But, but having said that, I remember specifically like during that two weeks, I had gotten like met some people uh -huh. at the beach and got a phone number for someone and it was just a guy, but I was not like, you know, he was just inviting me along and I ended up just like hopping on a ferry with them and went to St. John and went to this like party and in the street. And were there moments where you were like, this is my life? Like what is life? Yes. Every day, every day. I mean, I, I never got tired of it. Like it was just you know, every day it was just mainly just the scenery. I just felt like pinch me moments every time I looked around and saw mm -hmm. the water and I the know. beach and the rainbows and the, you know, all the things. So it's so beautiful. It, it's so different from here. Like, I don't think Western Kentucky isn't beautiful. Like it is in its own way. But like, I remember when we were in St. Lucia snorkeling on our honeymoon, I put, pulled my head up and I was like weeping and Chad was like, what is wrong? And I was like, it's just so beautiful. This is a very Rachel story. <laughs> it is a very Rachel story. Yes. <laughs> it was just, I mean, it's just breathtaking. And it's like, it just pictures just don't even do it justice. But I, I love that. Yeah. I mean, and it's just, it constantly was you putting yourself out there. But I do think too, that this is a good example. I think this whole story with you is a good example of you were really just leaning into who you are. Like you weren't, I don't feel like pushing yourself out of your comfort zone in a way that wasn't already very much like Callie, you know, like you weren't like somebody that was a homebody trying to make yourself like you weren't having like a, a quarter life crisis doing something totally unlike you. Like this right. was you truly yeah. like living now the, your, your dreams. Mm -hmm. And now you live in still by the water and yes. you're still not, you're still not a landlocked girl. No. Yeah. I live on North Padre Island now. So Corpus Christi is like our address, but we live over on North Padre and yeah, we're just a mile from the beach, um, have a pool, hot tub, all the things, palm trees in the backyard. Um, it's a golf cart community, so we can just hop on the golf cart and go. Little beach bars, little fun. It's still, yeah, I don't think I could ever long-term live somewhere that's not beachy, islandy, all the things. You. But, you know, it ruined it. my St. Thomas ruined it. I mean, it, you know, and it ruined me for me in a way, too, that now I just, I know that's what I want, and I'm not gonna ever move anywhere else you know fortunately unfortunately but that's you know I found what I love and that's what I want to do absolutely and I think it's cool too because after you saw people stayed connected with friends when you lived on an island in the Caribbean I don't I think it's really helped you and it's helped the people that that you matter to in your life realize like okay we can have a relationship while you live in Texas like you know while you live in Texas oh, yeah. permanently. Um, distance was not a thing that it feels a lot more. It feels like something to tackle easier 
when yes. you've already done it when it was like, you know, very limited times, flights home, that kind of stuff. Right. And that's something that, you know, Jeff, my boyfriend and I talk about that now that he's, I've introduced him to the Virgin Islands, he like is all about it and cannot like think about anything else pretty much. Like we're, he's always looking at flights, always want to go back. Do you think he'll go back? Do you think you'll live there again? I think that if we would, it would have to be Puerto Rico. Not, obviously, I don't speak Spanish now, but I think that we could make it. Only because in St. Thomas, like, there aren't a lot of yards. And now that we have Annie, like, I couldn't take her somewhere. That her golden retriever, by the way. My golden retriever, yeah, my number one. She's so good. She is. But I couldn't live somewhere that she wouldn't be comfortable. And in Puerto Rico, there's plenty of homes that have, like, an actual yard with the with a fence and that sort of thing. So yes, I mean, it's not, not completely out of the whim, but definitely definitely not in the near future by any means, but we'll see what happens. That's amazing. My last question before I want you to do some of my normal segments with me. My last question though, is like to anybody listening to this, that has got this kind of, and I want this to be like very practical and um, applicable to like a very similar situation. You know, I doesn't, doesn't have to be something that can be broad to anybody, but like truly people that are listening to this and are also thinking about like a really big physical move from where they live. It, it, do you have a couple, one or two, whatever, like big pieces of advice that come to your mind that like you wish, like you, that you learned from and you have thought like, okay, if I ever meet somebody like this is what I would be telling them for sure. Do you have anything like that that comes to mind? Yeah. I mean, I, I feel like I just say it's like, was like my biggest leap of faith and like just trusting in yourself that like, you're gonna be okay either way. Like whatever the outcome is, whether, you know, you end up hating it and you, you get it out of your system and come right back, like whatever. But if you have it in your heart and I've, I've said this, anyone that's asked me since, and like, if you have it in your heart, like you should see it through and at least go for it and see what happens. Like I said, you could really run away and be like, this was the biggest, dumbest thing I've ever done. Like, I love where I live. Why did I ever do that? But on the other side, it could lead you to this whole other life that you never even imagined. And it's beautiful. And you have a lot of, you know, fun things going on and different experiences. And something I did want to mention, some fun stuff that like off the cat that I did while I was there is I met Kenny Chesky, had dinner with Kenny, shared a glass of wine with him. Yeah, we were at um, dinner and he was like, this was before COVID, of course. He ordered like a really nice glass of wine and I didn't know that he was going to be paying for it like paying for our bill you know what I mean and so I ordered this like seven dollar glass of wine like you know and he was like why did you order that we ordered this like expensive you know whatever bottle he's like you want to try it and I was like sure I'll try it and so he handed me the glass of wine and I like took a sip and he had already taken a sip you know and I was like I just drank wine after Kenny Chesney like what am I doing? And so oh my gosh. that was like one of my favorite memories. How did you meet Kenny Chesney? He was like really involved at like with the disaster relief. He has a home over on St. John. So he like, you know, all of his music oh, was about yeah. like St. John pretty much all the beaches and just beaches in general, but specifically St. John. A girlfriend of mine had met him and was like helping some with like his side of the disaster relief. And she's like, we're going to dinner tonight with Kenny, like no excuses, you're coming. And I was like, of course I am, like left work. I was like, I'm on my yes, way. Yes, don't like, have to ask me twice. <laughs> yes, don't even skip a beat, I'm on my way. So yeah, so we like had the dinner, we were kind of like in a back corner and this lady that kind of like stalked him was there and he was like ducking and dodging. He like asked to like borrow one of our phones to pretend he was like talking to somebody. And so I was like videoing him over my shoulder and he was laughing, And but we got a good picture with him. And, and then another funny story we had rented well, when Natalie and Camille and Morgan and all them oh, yeah. came down, you know, that one trip, um, we went on a yacht and apparently like the Kardashians had rented it out the week before. And so like the people on there were like insanely rich, but that turned into a whole other story. But we were just always fun, like jumping off the top of the Willy T, like boating, just parasailing. What is the Willy T? It is a floating bar that it's like it's just a big boat and it's like run down like kind of hood you I don't know, know. this <laughs> made me think of the peanut boat oh Rachel oh my gosh yes I'll never forget that story about you either but I mean you just you look oh so gosh. sad on that peanut oh, boat too. okay so I'll tell you know 
this is like a whole if you're sitting at dinner with friends and they're laughing you can't not tell them so i will give an abbreviated version so we're yes, on top island in destin for a bachelorette party and we had had some fun the night before and your girl rach was not feeling too hot and i really had to use the restroom this is not Kentucky Lake. So there are, there are no secrets in this crystal clear Crab Island water. So I, I, I was just desperate. I, we, Callie went with me to like, this made me think of this was what you, we first tried to go to the little bar Island thing and there was no mm -hmm. restroom on there. And I was like, how do you all go to the restroom then all day when you're out here working your job? Like I still to this day think they're lying to me. Or they had a bucket, one of the two. They had something. They were offering me no options though. They were basically just like, no, nothing here for you. You're shit out of luck. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> So then I am just, you know, where there's a will, there's a way. I, we flagged down this little kid that is on the, <laughs> selling, selling boiled, so, this is one of my favorite. selling oh my boiled peanuts <laughs> on, on his like dad's boat. He probably couldn't have been like 10. I know he's probably like 13. Seriously though. He probably wasn't more than 13 or 14. And so I was like, I don't, why did I not take my phone? I don't know, but I was taking videos. That's the part. No, I think it was because, I think it was because when, by the time we met him, we were so far away from our boat, yes. that I, like we were just yes. out in the water and I was like, I will pay you. I think I was like, I'll pay you a hundred dollars or $20. It was yes. Like, somewhere. I was like, if somewhere. you will yeah. take me all the way over there to the, to the shore and so he was like okay so i get on this peanut boat that's like sell it and he stops to sell boiled peanuts on the way and these people are oh just like they're just looking at me in the front of this boat and i have on like a big sun hat and i've got my swimsuit on and my hands crossed yes <laughs> I was so upset and I was like, are you seriously stopping to sell peanuts while I'm trying, when I'm, in this, while I'm trying to get to the shore? And so this one guy even was like tasting the peanuts before he bought them from the kid. I mean, and then, and I keep looking back and Callie, I remember Callie looked at me and she's like, memorizes the boat number. Like it was like oh, yeah. L907, you know, whatever. You're like, I remembered it. So if something happens to you and you don't come back, like, I'll know who to call. That's some silly common street smarts I got right there. <laughs> it is. It is. And that's why you were the friend that was with me trying to figure out this, this predicament. So, I mean, I bet you it was 45 minutes to get all the way over there. Easy. And I was like, I left and I looked at him. I was like, you're going to be here when I get back. Right. <laughs> and I think at one point we had talked, I was like, so like, you know, what are you doing tomorrow? Or I don't know. And he was like, I got middle school football practice. <laughs> like he said something like that. And I was like, cool. So <clears throat> I go to the restroom. Hallelujah get back on this boat. And then I'm like, okay, now I'm ready to go. And like having, but also then having to get back through, it was like almost like the walk of shame of like everybody that saw me on this peanut boat. <laughs> like there was nothing left for mystery. Like no, everybody no. had to know what, what was going on. And so I finally get back and it was like, by the time I got back, the level of turnt had been amplified like times three. I think you all like clapped too when you got back. <laughs> it, yes, everybody, but it was, so, I was like, what has happened? Everything was so calm when I left. And by the time I got back, it was just so wild. And it was just, it was hilarious. We have a GoPro, Camille made that GoPro video. And part of it is me driving <laughs> back up on this boat with this kid. And I'm like, 
Yeah, I'm back. I made it. I didn't let the middle school. I didn't let the middle school kidnap me. Oh, geez, what a story, though. Oh my gosh, so many stories. My peanut boat just like lives rent free in my head. That whole like vision, the whole thing. Oh you know? my gosh, <laughs> it was. Uh, we got what one of the many adventures. Whenever my bachelorette party happens, we'll make sure we have another fun story like that. <laughs> Please, please. Oh my gosh, that's the best. Okay, so my next segment, Callie, it's called Release or Recommit. So we talk about um, something that we're either choosing to release, so we're done with it, we're letting it go, or we're recommitting. Um, and so we're we're going to buckle down and get back to, to what matters. Um, this week, I'm going to release. Um, one of the things I'm releasing is I've got like a stack of about 50, like 2XL t-shirts that I used to like wear as pajamas. And now I am like a matching PJ set girl, like to my core. I love a good, and I love these, I, these are like thrift shopping to me. I can make, I can make a great find for a matching pajama set. That's like nothing. It's on clearance, but it feel like the material. I like to say, like I pick with my eyes closed because like I will find what I'm looking for in the material. So I just don't need any more. Like I need to let these go. They're taking real up real estate in the closet. I don't need 50 big t-shirts. I am having to struggle getting rid of them. I don't know why, but I need to release them. Yeah. I would say so. And maybe it would make it better if you found, I like to donate to not just like Goodwill or something. I find an organization like, you know, someone that helps with like human trafficking or supplies, you know, flows to someone that might, you know, need it in a different way. Like yes. more of like, uh, you know, woman to woman need situation. So I do, I donate to, um, yeah, there's an organization here that helps um, sex I trafficking love that. victims. And so maybe find something that's more meaningful that you like, okay, they need that. I don't like, and it makes you feel better than it's just going to go get sold somewhere else. Yes. I like that better than just like bagging it up in a trash bag and not knowing where it's going at Goodwill or like the local, you know, yes. donation place that everybody takes stuff to or whatever. Yeah. Love that. Well, do you have one? I would say I need to really go through my pantry and I feel like my drawer that has all my like spatulas and stuff in it is like so chaotic and I only use like three of them so I kind of feel the same that that's kind of inspiring me to go through that drawer and either organize it and if I haven't used it in like six months maybe it needs to go yes I love that you know one of the things that I loved doing I did a couple months ago was I organized my hair products drawer and my uh, like two drawers in my bathroom that were a hot mess like everything was like mumbled together and I am somebody that I feel like I have a short I need a really short lease when it comes to like Hobby Lobby Bed Bath and Beyond Container Store like I could go ham real quick. Um, so like I was really determined to not start just buying containers without a plan. And I ended up only needing two. Like I looked through stuff and I figured I'm like, okay, I can put these two here and that's all I need. So maybe that can be like your treat at the end. If you get rid of the stuff in your pantry that you don't need, the treat can be getting a little organizational tool that like makes it a little bit more aesthetic. Perfect. Good advice. I like that. Thanks. Okay. Well, we end every episode with a self-care tip. Mine, you feel free to, I would love for you to participate. My self-care tip this week is try affirmations, a note to yourself, like something written out that you see while you're getting ready in the day that like gets your wheels spinning. Me and Chad both like do this in different ways. He does it funny to me. As you guys know from his podcast episode, if you've listened to his, he um, lo loves some explicit language sometimes. Um, so he has wrote notes to me before and I've kept him on the coffee pot because I think they're funny, but he'll be like, you're a bad MFer. Like, yeah. kick, kick today's ass. Love Chad. <laughs> Again, that's very and Chad. So it is so Chad. And it's like, it makes me shake my head, but you know, it's him. And so I think it's cute. And I have saved him, but the one, this is a very, this is a lot more Rachel, but the one I've saved that I like, have, 
I found on Facebook, but I want to write out my for myself because I think actually writing it myself and not just like printing this one, it has some power in it too. But it says, I will wake up with gratitude, work with grit, and walk with grace. A new week is here. I re will remember that my body is a temple. I will nourish it, encourage it, sustain it with good things. I will be aware of the things that trigger my stress and ask the Holy Spirit for wisdom on how to handle them. Peace will carry me. I will make room for silence. Clearing the distraction, I know that God will meet me there. I will invite the Spirit well, this one is, it's for Christmas. So I'll probably have to adjust this part. Because it says, I will invite the spirit of Christmas into my heart and my home. So then I mean, not Christmas, but you know, I loved that. I thought that was just so like, so well put. Yeah. Well, I think if you keep the spirit of Christmas in your heart all, all year round, then that says. So. That is very true. It's not, it's not, it doesn't not work, but if you wanted it to be seasonal, you could adjust, but I agree. Spirit of Christmas. Spirit of spring. There you go. Yep. What you got, Callie? I would say, you know, yesterday, I, again, I was traveling over the weekend, naturally. I was in New Mexico, just crossed off another state. But yesterday when I got home, I was like, I'm just so tired, but it was beautiful out. And I've been trying to do like, you know, I, I'm a Peloton girly. I ride my Peloton all the time. And, like have all the different apps, like whatever. How many rides are you up to now? Um, I think I did my like 375th today at Bro Road before, before we started chatting. That's awesome. So yeah, making some headway there. Um, but I was going to say that maybe just try something new as far as being active. Like yesterday I was like, I'm so tired. I don't want to do anything, but it was really nice. And my neighbor's little boy was outside and he was just like playing basketball. So I went out there and like played with him in the yeah. street and burned some calories, did something different, you know, that was still active. So maybe just finding something different to try that's active and yeah, it could be a lot of fun, a dance class, boxing, playing basketball on the street, like whatever you're vibing with, but especially as it gets nicer out, something outside. I know it's beautiful here today. You know, I want to, one of my things this week is I want to go to Zumba. I'm going to go back to Zumba. Oh, fun. They have Zumba on the beach here and I haven't gone down to do it yet. Okay, when but you know also on my list is come to see you in Texas this year. Yes. So maybe do. we need to when I come, we can go Zumba on the beach. Absolutely. I think it's on Monday and Tuesday, so just we'll make sure you on those things. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> yes, I will. Well, thank you for being here, Callie. I love that your story is actually, you know, it was a lot simpler than I thought. So the message to me here was you don't have to have a lot of plans to get to get it going. You just have to have mm -hmm. the like you said, the willpower and the, the willpower. Um, yeah. blinders on to like know your truth and not let other people put down in your mind if you think a move is right for you and know that as long as you've got the willpower and the willpower to save and like, you know, make yourself like have the financial, yeah. you know, um, uh, capabilities to get you there, you can figure the rest out. Yeah, absolutely. And don't be afraid to, yeah, to put yourself first and do what you think is right and best for your life because ultimately, you know, people and friends change and things happen, but your experiences and you know that ends up what what being what carries you through life so yeah if you have it in your heart just go for it and um yeah if anyone needs advice reach out to me and i'm, I'm your biggest supporter on I making the move that. so <laughs> yes you are well thanks for listening everybody and we'll see you next week Thank you for joining me this week. I hope this episode met you where you were at and it's given you your own clarity on steps forward for how you get there. Wherever and whatever that is, it is important and your dreams matter. I would love to hear what you think of this episode and how you get there. You can connect with me personally via email at howyougetthere at gmail.com or you can find me at Rach Ross Denson on Instagram, TikTok, and all other social media platforms. If you love how you get there, I have a favor to ask. Will you share this episode with a friend and take a few seconds to follow, rate, and review how you get there wherever you listen to your podcast? 
Please know you are playing a part in making my dream come to life. And for that, I am so grateful. Don't forget, if where you want to go in the future involves a home loan, I would love to help you Find me on Instagram at Rachel Denson underscore MLO to learn all about mortgages from my videos or use the link in the bio to schedule a one-on-one -on -one consultation with me. I hope to see you back here next week where we'll keep talking all about how you get there.